Hey guys, today I'm going to build a CFL grow light. And the reason is because I want to overwinter a more temperate variety of rhododendron. I have a particular species rhododendron called Nettleye that I have always wanted. Finally was able to get one of them at the Rhododendron Species Foundation. It was about a year and a half ago and I need to get a way to keep it going through the winter. So I've never done this before. Uh, that is keeping plants indoors. I tried a jade plant uh, when I was younger. It didn't work out too well, but uh, I've never actually had a grow light to overwinter a plant. Uh, last year I brought this rhododendron inside and put it by my living room window and because of the trees that we have around the house it didn't do that well. A lot of the leaves started dying back. It did make it through the winter but it didn't look that good by springtime. Come spring I put it back out in the in the greenhouse and it flushed out with new growth and did fantastic. Right now it's October, it looks great, but we're just headed into that colder part of winter and so I want to get it inside before it starts getting uh, down to freezing temperatures. So we're going to build this grow light so that I can get more effective light on this rhododendron, get it through the winter and get it looking great. Of course, it's never going to get planted out on the landscape, but it's going to make a great patio plant. So let's get started on this and get this plant into its wintertime home. All right, so let's talk about all the parts we're going to need here. I picked up a cheap, I think it was a $1.67 wire here that I'm going to splice into the setup. It's just a double prong. There's no uh, ground cable that's going to go to it. And then some 14 gauge wire, some wire strippers and cutters here wire nuts. These guys, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but they're just cable clamps that I'll use to hold down the wire to the box once we get it start, uh, set up here so they're not dangling. And then a socket, some type of a socket to mount onto your box. You've got your lights. And then these, I want to talk about a little bit. So these are just double uh, bulb splitters here. They're cheap. I think they're about uh, 250 a piece. And I ended up getting six of them so I can uh, splice them off of each other. But at first I bought a set at Lowe's and they will work just fine, but these I've got at Home Depot. The difference was at Lowe's, they didn't have a 90 degree angle here and so the bulbs were a lot closer together and the quality just didn't seem quite as good. These are a lot more stout. I really like the quality. I really like the 90 degree angle because it splits the bulbs up a little better um, and gives a more even uh, light over the plant. So if you're looking for them, these I purchased, purchased at Lowe's. You can get them on Amazon or just about anywhere, I guess, uh, that sells uh, electrical equipment parts. So Leviton Company was the name on it if you're looking for it. but. Anyway, I really like those. And then you're gonna need your light bulbs. The reason I went with these, uh, this particular build also is because I can find these parts just cheap and easy and they're readily available. Um, I don't have to go online, I don't have to go to Amazon, I don't have to wait for a shipment of specialty things. Um, these you can just find at big box stores right there with the 5000K uh, wavelength of light, which is perfect for uh, the green growth of plants. And then also these guys can be found uh, readily. And these are the 2700. Uh, it just adds an extra spectrum, light spectrum to the, to the light that we'll build here and gives the plant a, a well-rounded spectrum to feed from. So these are 23 watt bulbs, 100 watt equivalent, and it should be more than enough to get the plants through the winter. Also, in the case that I, I eventually want to use this for something else, this setup will be perfect for growing indoor vegetables like tomatoes, um, lettuce, uh, herbs, anything you know small and easy to grow like that through the winter. You could put higher wattage bulbs on here if you desired, but really I just wanted to go with readily available parts. So then you'll need a drill with a little drill bit. Uh, ruler, pencil, tape measure, and also to mount this socket, I wanted to show you, it didn't come with screws. I just had these laying around. They were for a, a doorknob, and anyway, you can use just about anything. So 
try to use things you've got laying around. All of this stuff is pretty cheap, easy to come by, uh, and you can find it just about anywhere. This is the setup. So I already had the box, which worked out great. I built it years ago because I was going to make an incubator out of it. There's another lid that goes to it, but I'm not going to use that. I painted the inside of the box white, and then this is the setup I'm going with. So I know a lot of people, you can find videos of people doing this. I thought it was pretty slick. One of the things I like about it uh, is it spreads the light out evenly throughout this box. And it also kind of lays the bulbs flat a little bit because this is a little ballast and it can heat up. So you want that heat to drift upward. You don't want these bulbs straight up and down because that heat will all go into the ballast and shorten the lifespan of it. Uh, I really like this setup. It's, I'm only going to have to use two sockets that I screw down to it. I'll be able to get 184 watts in here. And really if I wanted to put more wattage in down the road, we could put some more on the side over here, or you could turn it to fit this way, and you could fit four sockets in there, and uh, what, 16 bulbs total. That would be quite a bit of heat in there though, and you would probably want to put a fan into the side. Next we've got to get the wires cut. So I want to do a parallel circuit here so that I'm getting the same amount of volts to each set of lights it will make sure that each set is very bright if you have a series circuit if there was damage to one light then the other light wouldn't work and the voltage gets cut way down to where both lights aren't very bright so what I'm gonna do the gold is the hot side and the silver is the neutral so all I'm going to do, I put these guys, I flipped them upside down and put them exactly where I want them in the box. And I'm just going to wire both of the, the hot side and then I'll take another wire and I'll wire both of the neutral together. And then we'll get the cord here. We're going to cut off of this cord right here, splice that wire, or uh, trim the rubber back from that wire, and then we're going to splice in a neutral and a hot right into the neutral and hot of this cord. And then we'll have our plug. Alright, so I finally got everything wired up, and I've got one wire here going to each neutral and one wire here going to each power positive line. Uh, the wire here is going to be our cord and that I cut off the end and then one end went to neutral, one end went to the hot or power. I uh, screwed these guys down as even as I could so that everything is going to be pretty symmetrical throughout the unit. One thing I want to show you I ended up breaking this off and had to grab my wife's hot glue gun and glue these little chunks back together. Uh, I thought the plastic was going to be a little softer and I was going to be able to whittle away this little hole that the, the wires were going through with some wire cutters and as soon as I clamped down it just snapped right off. So I ended up drilling some holes, same thing on the other side. Uh, I drilled the hole, it ended up chipping a little piece, but I would recommend if you do use these plastic outlets here to just drill into the wood and take a chunk out of it so that the wires can fit underneath the plastic. And that's what I did here for the power cord. Right here, I ended up with going, going with these little fasteners here. It just nails right down into the plywood. I used two of them and I put them there so that if I, this gets yanked on on the outside, the inside is nice and tight and firm and it's not going to pull on the socket at all. Alright, so the finished product here. I have everything mounted up, all the wiring's done, the bulbs are in place. I'll have a total of 184 watts with these bulbs. You could get bigger bulbs if you wanted to, but I think these will be adequate to get my plant through the winter. So this is that rhododendron nettleye and I just brought it in from the greenhouse so it put on a lot of nice new growth this, uh, this summer and I want to make sure that I keep it uh, going strong through the winter here. So let's go ahead and turn these lights on and we'll see 
what kind of output they have. Let me get over here. Wow. I am thoroughly impressed. I don't think this camera does it justice. It kind of dims out the background, but with the naked eye here, it is just lit up bright white in there. I really like that I painted that inside white uh, instead of putting foil in. I think that white just brightens everything up quite a bit more. And that plant is going to get plenty of light, I think, to get through the winter. Um, pretty excited about how this turned out. Now I just need to come up with a way to mount this. Right now I've got it propped up on some stools and uh, shoe boxes, but yeah, that's, that's quite a bit of light output right there. It is really cooking. And of course, with uh, the compact fluorescence, as they brighten up more, wow, it's getting even more bright. As they brighten up more, time goes by, they'll, they'll get brighter uh, as they're on for a longer period of time. So anyway, hope that helps you guys. I uh, hope you're able to use that information to set up your own grow light and grow some tomatoes or herbs or just overwinter some plants in your living room. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. If you liked this one, like it. Uh, if you want to follow along, subscribe. And thanks for watching.